Welcome to the series Writing for Games. In this video, I'm going to go over barks and grunts as they apply to dialogue in games. Let's review a little bit. We create dialogue for two purposes, communication between characters and informing players. When it comes to, I used to be a dialogue box and then I needed to deliver information faster. We've covered in previous videos the use of the dialogue box. We convey information, characters are discussing things and also informing the player. But when it comes to barks and grunts, these exist outside the more traditional dialogue box. They are delivering information faster. And in fact, this is a pretty classic one right here. I used to be a blank, then I needed to deliver information faster. I used to be an adventurer, then I took an arrow to the knee, is an example of a bark. So in game writing, a bark is a short statement or exclamation used to draw player attention to an in-game event, item, or situation. You've probably encountered them quite a bit if you've played a number of video games. One of the most famous ones occurs in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Hey, listen. This occurs so many times in that game that players often get frustrated with Navi, the character who speaks these lines. But they serve as a reminder that there needs to be something done of the next story event. So they're informing the player. But they're also communication between Navi and Link. Barks are the most common thing encountered by a player, and often the most difficult to write. When we're having communication between two different characters or writing dialogue for them, we can often set it within a scene. We can give them some context. They're discussing some topic or making some plans. When it comes to barks, they can be a little more complicated because they're not always necessarily time sensitive or tied to a particular setting or tied to a particular scene. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In the game Skyrim, the various guards in the game, if you visit, visit the various cities, have hundreds of barks. And there's a link here if you want to go check them out. The guards comment on everything from what the character is wearing to the various statuses of the quest. The goal of all these, the huge number of them, is to constantly remind the player of world events. Oh, there's a dragon. Oh, you're wearing this particular type of armor. They constantly remind the player without hopefully becoming too annoying. Although, as the previous example pointed out about the arrow to the knee, they can sometimes get a little silly in their repetition. But the goal is to draw attention, but not too much attention. So ideally, when we write barks, they should draw the character's attention or draw the player's attention about a character event but they should not draw too much attention or become too annoying. And this is where they become kind of tricky to write sometimes. They should inform, but not distract. So let's look at kind of how they're used in other games. So if you played something like Apex Legends or Valorant or other online competitive games, or especially online competitive shooters, you've probably heard the lines like reloading, heals here, healing, or all kinds of use of certain skills or certain events. These are all barks. These are all telling the player about things that are happening in the game. And hopefully they're not too annoying. And there might be variations on them. There might be two or three different line readings of the word reloading. Or even healing might appear multiple times as voiced within the game. All of these are barks. In the Dragon Dogma series, pawns, which are a type of character within the game series, often bark, that is, give information about what's going on. Hey, there's a treasure chest. Hey, there's a ladder. I wonder what's over there. Enemies are incoming. Characters are constantly barking, giving information to the player as they progress in the game. Let's shift a little bit and talk about grunts. We've been talking about barks as kind of informing the player. Grunts are also informing the player, but are not necessarily words. They're more a description of a bodily expression and can sometimes help in conveying emotional subtext. And we'll look at kind of examples of this. Generally, a grunt is a description of pain. So you often heard grunts, like you've probably heard grunts within video games, as kind of types of hurt, stab, shock, whatever. Generally, these are voice lines in which you might hear someone go, ugh, uh, 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 kind of various pain noises, depending on the kind of type of pain that's occurring, length of pain that's occurring. And these are generally grunts. Although, some games use it as a kind of vocal shorthand. So in games where not every line is voice acted, and there are a large number of them that are not fully voice acted, grunts can help serve as kind of a vocal shorthand. Let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. 
In some of the more recent Yakuza games, instead of voice acting every line, they would hear um, automopedic expressions instead of voice dialogue. So these are words that describe sounds. It's like, hmm, eh, huh, okay. In, and then the player will then see the text on the screen. This helps give a kind of emotional subtext to what's going on. You might see a sentence, but then the noise would eh, as kind of an uplifting noise to indicate a question. Many role-playing games, instead of, again, voice acting their many, many lines of dialogue, will often use this as a kind of shorthand. And it can be incredibly useful to record 12 or 20 different reactions from a particular voice actor, and then use those as part of layering extra information for every corresponding line. So the player would see text, and then they would hear a little bit of extra information to give them that subtext for it. So let's kind of review what I've talked about in this video. We have barks. These are short statements or exclamations used to draw player attention. But we have grunts, which tend to be kind of bodily expressions, generally hurt, sometimes pleasure, and oftentimes are used as vocal shorthands in some games. You might hear eh, hmm, eh, as kind of additional subtext to what's going on. All of this exists outside the more traditional dialogue box. Barks and grunts rarely appear within boxes, but they sometimes appear as companions to them that give it a little bit of emotional subtext, a little bit of emotional information about what's going on to give that extra information. Thanks for watching.